Welcome to Let Go and Soar Ministries Wednesday afternoon worship in the Word. We missed you last week, but we're back now. And we should be back every week, as far as I know. So, thank you for being here. We're in wonderful, beautiful Weaverville, California, which we've had some great weather. Need some rain, need some snow in the mountains, but uh, we're praying for that, and we know that God's going to deliver what we need. Maybe not what we want, but He's going to deliver what we need. So, Let's open with a word of prayer this morning. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for an opportunity to come together again and worship you and raise you up and praise your name. And we give you all the glory, Lord, because we know that it's, it's you. And that is the reason that uh, we're all here. We're all here together. And it's you that uh, gives us these opportunities. And when we look at the world today, Lord, we know that uh, we are a blessed nation blessed because of what you have given us here what we what i like to call our promised land so we just ask you for that covering of favor and blessing over this meeting lord and holy spirit you are welcome in an ever-present way here today so we just ask that all in jesus name amen. amen i'd also like to offer up a prayer for jim who normally plays guitar i got my cast off so i am able to play some i did last night as ellen can attest to um I just want to, uh, let's pray for Jim because he's not feeling well. So Father God, we thank you, we praise you, and we bless you. We are so grateful that we can always come to you with every need. And as a matter of fact, you tell us to pray in all things. So Lord, we just lay our brother Jim down before you. Lord, we lay him in your arms. Embra embrace him, Lord, and shelter him under your mighty wings, Lord. Bathe his lungs and his bronchial area, any any of his breathing system, Lord, that needs to be repaired. Lord, we just, we just speak life into Jim, life and energy and peace. And we pray, Lord, for your provision that he is able to get any medications that he needs. Or if it is your choice, Lord, to uh, just heal him divinely. We're always up for that. So we Amen. thank you, Jesus. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 you meet Jesus there's just there's just nothing else mm -hmm. there's just nothing else worth it nothing else is worth anything the world is not worth anything without Jesus Your prayer. 
presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings
have family and friends that we may have at one time they knew the Lord they knew Jesus and uh, they just kind of took a different path and that song just calls them home yeah it just calls them home with the father's heart come on home it's like uh, pastor Brandon says all the father does is say come to me come yeah, to me that's right you know that's just right. just come to me it's so good to know. He's even better at fixing Oh, yeah. Yeah, he helps us do it. That's the good part. He helps us do it. Where the Spirit of the Lord is
Jesus is the only one that you can fully surrender to mm -hmm. and to she achieve freedom in doing so. Yes, usually you surrender into captivity. That's right. Waving the white flag of purity instead of the white flag of defeat. That's right. That's a good word. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a light spent with you. So here I am to work. Thou art exalted 
you are God above all. You are most high. You are magnificent, holy one. We praise you, we bless you, and we worship you, Lord. We seal this worship, Lord, and we ask your blessing upon the discussion that is to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You heard the worship. Now you're going to hear the word, hopefully. Uh, we're in a new format that we just started several weeks ago. Okay. Where... Uh, Instead of giving a message from Sharon or I or sometimes Brian or whoever, we're going to uh, just see what uh, what people have, uh, what they want to talk about. Possibly things that have been going on in your life for a while or maybe just in the last week or so. And, uh, and then we're going to try to uh, speak into that with what Scripture has to say about it. This okay. type of thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, and it could be just an experience. It could be something you want to share out of a book, like I'm going to read today. Uh, something that pertains to, uh, you know, a bi biblical type sense. And uh, so that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to read something out of Bill Johnson's book called Born for Significance. Uh, a section that I pointed out uh, in last week's uh, Tuesday night session uh, that I asked people to read, but I'm going to start a little bit ahead of that point because I think it's pertinent. So, this is called the priestly role. It says, love does not rejoice in wrong suffered by anyone. There is a loyalty that needs to be demonstrated with compassion and love for people. God alone has the right for vengeance. We don't. And when we accuse the unrighteous, we are missing our priestly responsibility. Every believer is a priest unto the Lord, according to 1 Peter 2, 9. I once had a woman rebuke me, this is Bill Johnson speaking, and dry, try to cast a demon out of me at the end of a Sunday morning service when I refused to curse the city of San Francisco with her. Uh, uh. She was exhibiting the wrong use of authority. That's right. If I misuse my authority, God will defend the one I've attacked. But if I use my priestly role to intercede for, for and love the person who is wrong, yes. God will discipline them simply because they have the support needed to endure the discipline. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting, interesting principle in Scripture that I first heard about around 30 years ago. This beautiful combination often culminates in the transformation of one, of one under God's correction. To lovingly support must not work against God's dealings. Instead, we patiently love in spite of their circumstance. That says a lot right there, don't yes, we? It does. Yeah. We love in spite of their circumstance. Daniel lived faithfully in his assignment, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And while there was an, wasn't a positional promotion for him, and he was already at the top in his role, he was able to serve four different kings each with the same result. Righteousness prevailed. He was extremely loyal to these kings, above and beyond. And uh, the end result of Nebuchadnezzar's story is his complete repentance. Anybody know Nebuchadnezzar was the, was the ruler of Babylon for quite some time? And, and, uh, and he was uh, not a Christian. At, at, the, at the beginning but uh, Daniel supported him anyway because that was his role at that particular time and it kind of goes along with what we were just talking about uh, we love in spite of their circumstances don't we so consider this point the vilest of leaders was transformed through the loyalty of one righteous man yes yes now that's kind of leading up to the part that I want to wanted yes. everybody to read after they went home last week Daniel had something powerful in his heart. It was a love and a passion for his leader. This kind of heart would change the climate of business and education in our cities and even our nations. Simply guarding the lips and the comments that are made about our public leaders would have made a tremendous effect on our homes and the priestly destinies of the next generation. Parents can't be careless in their speech about their bosses, their pastors, their presidents, and other leaders and think that their children will be unaffected. That's right. 
Remember the principle of reaping and sowing. For me to speak evil of a leader makes me an open target as a leader in my home. It's reaping and sowing. Now that's, that's something that Bill Johnson wrote in the book and I think that was so critical to a lot of the stuff that uh, the world's going through today because we know there's a lot of contention, a lot of, uh, of uh, division in the world, don't we? Hmm. A lot of greed. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of everything. A lot, a lot of things that, that aren't, have nothing to do with, with uh, walking in, with the Lord. So I want to read a little uh, verse out of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses I'm just going to go 1 through uh, 1 through 5 I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom yes preach the word be ready in season and out of season and uh, and I want to put, put my little two cents in right here uh, preach the word be ready in season and out of season you don't have to be a pastor you don't have to go have gone to seminary you don't have to have any of those things if you have a basic understanding of what it's what the Bible's message is you can evangelize mm -hmm. right you can mm -hmm. yes yes you can yes. yes you can okay preach the word be ready in season and out of season reprove rebuke and exhort with all patience and teaching and there has to be love included in that for the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine, but they will gather to themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires, having itching ears. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn to myths. And that's exactly what we've been going through the last few years in this country and probably other countries too. I mean, I don't live in other countries, but I have ears, I listen. But be self-controlled in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and prove your ministry. No, I just had something pressing on my mind for the past few days. Okay. And it's really struck me. But as people, as regular people, we tend to think of other people as our enemies. And we can't we have to lose that mindset completely right. that the world gives us to look at i mean we call this a human race where are we racing to <laughs> we're not in a race we're here to love each other and we can't do anything for anybody unless we do love somebody unless we love jesus and jesus gives us the love the ability to change us to transform us because i know what i was like before before jesus i was a mess <clears throat> you know and sorry i have to give my testimony i love my testimony <laughs> i've been delivered from depression from anxiety from OCD because of the love of Jesus and because of what he's done for me I'm able to love other people because he's in me all the time he's healed broken bones and he's he's the God of miracles but he's the God of love and that's what we're so we're here to learn is how to love each other how to love each other truly and put everyone above us because we love them mm -hmm. and we need to lose the, that attitude that hey we're in a race we're we're not in a race you guys I got a scripture that kind of goes a little bit along with that okay <clears throat> that's what we're supposed to do here yep is we we try to find scriptures that go along with things so this is in Philippians chapter 2 I'm going to read 1 through 1 through 5 if there is any encouragement in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any compassion and mercy, then fulfill my joy and be like-minded, having the same love, being in unity with one mind. <laughs> let nothing be done out of strife or conceit, but in humility, let each esteem the other better than himself. Yes. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Mm -hmm. Let this mind be in you all, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
What does that say? I mean, it doesn't say you get into any, anybody else's business. No. But you look to things that may be going on in their life that you can discern that are not going well, that you might be able to speak into and speak to them about. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's what. That's what. Uh, that's what's important. That doesn't mean you. You stick your nose where it doesn't belong. No. Yeah. You be their friend. You be their friend. Be there. Be there for them. Figuring out where it belongs. And if they want to, if, yeah. they, if they want to bring forth something and talk about something, sure. you're there for that. You're there for that, and you're not there to judge. Exactly. They have to feel safe with you yeah. that you're not going to. Fire and brimstone. Yeah, fire and brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I like that. <laughs> they, because, you know, tough love, honestly, is easier than the love that Jesus has. Tough love is a lot easier than the love that Jesus has. Because the love that Jesus well, has yeah. is caring. I have it written down, in fact. Totally well, tough love, Whoa. you're going to have to explain that a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to go me. To. Okay, tough love is easier than gently, affectionate, sensitive, open, persistent love. God will be tough when he needs to be. And we will be firm when he tells us to be firm. Mm -hmm. Empathy is empowered by faith and prayer to see God's God worth in the one I love. Mm -hmm. Christ accepts us imperfect. So we have to accept others in their imperfection. Of course. We have to remember Jesus wasn't popular when he was on earth. He hung out with the he hung he out with, with the, the wrong <laughs> Yeah, he was with the unpopular. He, he well, was money changers. Yeah. <laughs> but remember he hung out with the wrong sort of people. Mm -hmm. He hung out when when Matthew came to him. Mm -hmm. he, he loved he, the unlovely. He loved the unlovely. One thing about tough love mm -hmm. that Sharon and I have learned over the years is Tough love always brings back uh, a reward down the road because if people, uh, mm -hmm. it, it helps people to conform to what you know is right. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, when, they, when they eventually come around to the, uh, to the and they, they age, they mature, they eventually come around to that way of thinking, they'll come back and thank you for, oh. for being honest with them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. but the gentle love of Christ is an honest love. It's yeah. very and. Oh. She's still coming. Go ahead. Are you done? Or? Oh no! Uh, I was just saying that. Let, let her finish. That my. Oh, sorry, I thought you. Um. <laughs> I guess my mission is different. You know, some people love tougher than others. I can't. I'm just not a tough love person. Yeah. I've tried, and all I can do is I go back to Jesus, and he says, that's not you. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. And that's for me. That's on me. You know, that's Jesus on, in me. Mm -hmm. But for other people, they have a different personality. Like with Brian. I love Brian. But Brian can be, he can correct people in love, which is kind of a tough love. But he can point that out. Mm -hmm. I don't have that ability. Okay. I just I just wanted to uh, say that there's there's some real basics to to uh, what we call tough love, and and we need to realize that love is about connection and relationship. Right. Okay. If what you're doing is not building connection and relationship, it's not love. Okay, you can you can bring correction mm -hmm. that helps people connect okay. better and build relationship, or you yeah. can bring judgment that mm -hmm. says you're wrong, and I don't want anything to do with you until you stop being wrong. Right. Okay, that's judgment. That's not love. No, okay, not so you, if if you say this is a wrong activity, and I want to help you. Get free from that activity because it's hurting you and/or those around you. This is this is uh, 
it's it's about love and connection. Now, I I just can't say that strongly enough. Is it's about building relationship. Okay. If it yeah, takes, that's, that's because that's what God does. Yes. He he is all when he corrects us. He's he's correcting us toward him. I love I love the concept that he gave me about repentance. That it is. Uh, when, like a sailor on a ship who's going across the sea to a certain port, okay? When you're traveling, you have currents and winds and tides that interfere as you're going that if you're not paying attention, will take you off course. And to repent is to get back on course, get back on the right direction because even if you're not turning around and doing the ultimate, you know, murdering people and all this stuff, you still might not be going on course. And so God is constantly calling us back on well, course. He's always, well, he's always calling us yes. back on course. That's right. That's right. Well, Bill Johnson, and I can't, I can't find it exactly in the book, but... Uh, what exactly did, did he did he say, Sharon? About uh, <laughs> Bill was talking about correction, correcting somebody, and you should not do it unless it hurts you. Exactly. In other words, in other words, you have to do it from a place of love. Right. And right. if if it doesn't hurt to do it, then don't do it. Yeah. It says, uh, "Love does not rejoice in wrong suffered by anyone." That's right. Yeah. So I wanted to, uh, this occurred to me this morning and yesterday actually, so that's confirmation right there. Um, I'm doing a, I did, a devotion by Reinhard Bonnke. Does anybody know who Reinhard Bonnke is? He is a German evangelist. He's gone home to be with Jesus now. But he is uh, an astounding man yeah. of God. Uh, and I've learned so much from him and from his uh, successor, who is uh, Daniel Walenda. Um, it's amazing. He's, he's amazing. But this is called your original anointing. Mm. You are uniquely created, anointed, and appointed by God for his purposes mm. and for your time and season. As your days, so shall your strength be. Deuteronomy 33:25. Instead of worrying about what you do not have, yeah. focus on what you do have. Step yeah. out in faith and watch God work through you. On the day of Pentecost, now this is where it really starts to get good, folks. So really, really listen hard here. On the day of Pentecost, the 120 did not cry for a double anointing. <laughs> Please note, and he says this in capital letters, Nobody left the upper room with two flames on their head. <laughs> okay? Well, that's one, wow. Just one sat upon each of them. Acts 2, verse 3. But this one flame represents the whole fire of God. Right. Its authority, power, and glory. He says, when I travel the world, I'm often asked, please pray for me. I want your anointing. He says, my counter question do you think that if I give you my anointing, I will go home without? Sure. <laughs> Surely not. But here's a wonderful secret. If you got Reinhard Bonnke's anointing, you would become a copy of Bonnke. In other words, of him. And let me tell you, I personally do, want to, do not want to be a copy from a copy. And God doesn't want that for you either. It's really some food for thought here. Yes. If you want to know something about the character of God, just consider nature. <laughs> Over 7.5 billion human beings do not have the same fingerprints right. that we all know, and that is astounding. And no two leaves of any tree have the same structure. Yeah. Why is that? Because God is not a duplicator. Right. He <laughs> is the creator. Yeah. Did you catch that? God is not a duplicator. He is the creator. That's right. He only produces originals and operates no duplica duplicating machine. Your flame on your head is so personal that it bears your name. It is custom made for you only. It would not fit anyone else. That's good. Like that. Nobody on earth can serve God exactly as you. You are unique and so is your anointing. That's 
So I really, really like that. Yeah. You know, that is really. I, I, I. I see myself actually after that walking around with the flame above my head. And really, you, you laugh, but we all should. But excuse me, but we all should. We all should. You know, we all have that flame of fire within us that we have received when we received Christ, and then Holy Spirit within us. So I just really enjoyed that, and I wanted to share it with you guys. I was going to say about the anointings and how unique each of us are I couldn't administrate myself out of a paper bag at gunpoint but I couldn't you know math is like bad to me it's but it's a foreign language <laughs> eh, what you say so but my anointing is encouraging people to do what they do the best they can whether it's crunching numbers or crunching recipes. That's another one I can't <laughs> do at gunpoint. I'm canning my cans. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I don't have that special anointing to be a special <laughs> chef. But I have an anointing to bring encouragement and laughter and joy to people that don't feel it. So... Mm. But not everybody can do that either. That's so, important. Because we're all created with our own unique anointings. Mm -hmm. And so, unique up on me and here I am. That's, that's what this, uh, that's what this uh, class or teaching, whatever you want to call it, that Sharon and I are doing on Tuesday nights is all about. You're born for significance. Uh, we all have a, at least one gift. Maybe more. Uh, but to develop that gifting and uh, and and realize this, your significance because of it. Yeah, there's the book. It's by Bill Johnson, who is the uh, the uh, pastor, lead pastor down at uh, Bethel Church in Reading, and uh, it's a great book. Uh, if anybody would like to read that, well, it's available. We've ordered our copy. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. But uh, but all of us have a gift, and even even if you're a secular individual, which Bill talks about in the book, uh, you still need to respect uh, that individual. They have a gift. They may de they may or may develop it. They may not develop it. But uh, you can listen to secular music, and you could some fantastic musician that just gets out there and plays nothing but secular music maybe something you don't like but that's a gift that he developed just kind of went the other direction with the development uh same with uh with just about anything you can imagine it's uh uh no matter if you're gifted in some type of a scientific field or some type of a mm -hmm. artwork field or there's there's so many different things to talk about so but uh, we all have a gift and uh and we're we're uh are the, the, realizing the significance of that gift i think it's also how it applies to how we how we not only how we use it but how we share it yes because sharing is everything you you should not keep the gift that god gave you to yourself right. it was never meant for that. no it was never meant for that it was meant to share so I want to read one little, another piece of scripture, if that's okay, kind of fit it in here while you folks think of what you want to talk about next. It's uh, Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. You know which one I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not covet. And if there are any other commandments, are summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love works no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. That's right. Yeah. Love, it, bottom line, it's all about love. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're talking about pure, unadulterated God's love. For, for us and how we're supposed to share that right 
Oh, Brian wants to speak? Okay, fine. I didn't see you over there, Brian. I'm sorry. I was looking the other direction. <laughs> well, when you're looking the other direction, it's not hard. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, for, for me, in this last uh, few days I've been reading in, in uh, First Kings, uh, there's a story that I really love about Elijah uh, when he's going up against the prophets of Baal uh, for Jezebel. And, and uh, there, is, there is a verse that I just want to zoom in on for just a moment, which is uh, chapter 18, verse 17, from the New Living Translation. It says, O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people who will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's so beautiful, and I, I even posted it on my Facebook, and, and you know, you can take that and, and apply it to our nation, to our country, to our town, however you want to look at that. Could, could you read that one more time, please? Yes. Oh, Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, oh, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to yourself. Huh. Good. Now, I'd like to just, like, put the perspective into that a little bit okay which uh why he said that and and up to that point i won't i won't read it all but i encourage you to to read this chapter first kings chapter 18 uh he he is challenging these worshipers of false gods to basically a face-off here mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna set up a sacrifice on an altar. You do yours, I'll do mine. We'll get two cows. You pick which one you want. You cut yours up, and I'll cut mine up, and we won't set a fire. And then you have to ask your God to light yours, and I'll ask mine to light mine. And whoever does it will be God. And this is all before the people. All the people of the whole just about the whole country they were all called together to witness this right and what I wanted to point out or what God pointed out to me so I wanted to share I'll put it that way yeah. is that he made this declaration that God has called these people before they responded it wasn't all these people are here because God called them it was God called them and now they were going to be his people. And this is the reason why. Because they had this competition, if you will. And of course, the false god couldn't deliver. Right. Okay. And they t spent all day trying to the point of cutting themselves and making themselves bleed right. to yeah. try to make their God respond to their prayers and and toward the end um, I don't know how much permission he had from God on this but <laughs> he was actually teasing them a little bit yeah. hey maybe your God's off in the bathroom right now <laughs> or, or maybe he's taking a nap why don't you just you know yeah, yell a little louder yeah and and uh, when they got done toward the end of the day it came time for what they, was called the evening sacrifice he said all right now just pour water all over everything uh -huh. and now do it again and did it three times drenched it there was a, a ditch around the altar that was filled with water because of so much that they poured over the top of it and then he's prayed and he said now god light the fire for your uh -huh. sacrifice right and the fire that came down was so hot it not only consumed the sacrifice it consumed the water and the stones, stones yeah. the very Wood. stones of the altar yeah just to demonstrate the power yeah. of God and the, and that God was there in the midst of them right and from that point they said the Lord he is our God okay they decided yeah uh -huh. and and being the fickle people that fickle people can be which is like human beings right it only lasted a little while <laughs> but for that moment i was listening to uh 
a preacher on the radio today briefly and uh, I can tell you his name if you like but uh, he was talking about someone in his congregation this is a this is a guy with a huge congregation who was a it was a person that uh, he, he, he had a good heart he or she I don't remember what he said if it was a he or she had a good heart and was trying to was trying to evangelize and bring someone to the Lord so what he did was he told this person who had multiple problems they had a son in prison uh, some type of disease that uh, that either they were going through or one of the relatives just a list and they said well you when you when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior he's going to take care of all these things he's going to heal that person he's going to get your son out of jail he's going to he's going to take the, the and it's and it's going to happen you know so this person accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior well two weeks later this person that accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior came back and he says you can take Jesus and put it you know where because none of that stuff happened wow. and so the preacher on the thing says don't ever tell anybody that don't ever make promises like that to somebody because you cannot keep those promises. Well, and you don't know what God's plan is. Yeah. Uh, when you bring somebody to the Lord, you, you bring somebody to the Lord, uh, those things are, are potentially can, can happen. Yeah. They're, they're, they potentially can. If you stay in faith and you trust Him and you believe in your heart with all your heart that yes, uh, but it's in God's timing to start with, and it may, it may never happen because that may not be part of his plan for you or for the people that you're talking about. But uh, what brings people to the Lord is, I think what, uh, what, what uh, Brian spoke about it a minute ago was your own testimony. Yes. What did Jesus do for you? Yes. Or, and other people that have come to the Lord, what is their testimony? Especially if the people that you're talking to knew you before. Yeah. You, I mean, then it really hits them. Then it really hits them. That's what brings them to the Lord. And, uh, and, and, and you know, you have to explain to people that, that you have to develop this relationship. And you, you have to completely surrender. And, and, and let, the Lord, let the Lord work in you. Because when you completely surrender to the Lord, this is part of the, part of the uh, prayer at the end too. When you completely surrender your heart and you've repented and you've gone the other direction I guarantee you you will have an encounter yes you will absolutely have an encounter and that will be your testimony and right. I think anybody in here this that uh, that, that, that can attest to that and the longer you stay in relationship as the months and the years go by you'll have encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter and and you just kind of add to your testimony and the, like I said, the people that knew you before and people that knew you during, well, that means you're going to make a lot of new friends while you're going through this period. Right. And they're all going to see these changes and this, these things that happen. Miracle healings happen. And that's, that's not an unusual thing. Mm. You know, people, people become uh, addiction-free. That's right. Pe yeah. People be, be healed of diseases. And... And on and on and on and it happens it just happens and and you, you can't say when exactly it's going to happen it could happen immediately it could happen way down the road but it happens and that's where intercessory prayer is so important isn't it you never give up the intercessory prayer you know one thing that we we do need to point out is the reason that they're healed from alcohol and drug addiction and any other dr uh, addictions is because jesus addresses the cause in their life yes. he gets down to what what initially made it made their lives what what initially drew them to that addiction mm -hmm. he heals that part and then <clears throat> the addiction is gone yeah and jesus always knows what the what the origin of that was and is yep. and uh, better, but than we do. better than we do and uh, when you ask for it just like if you when you ask for wisdom when you ask for it with all your heart and everything it's going to happen for you but you know Jesus likes to, us to co-labor with him he, he wants that desire and that's another big word out of that book desire <clears throat> we have to desire that you can't just say well if you're going to do it, go ahead and do it. I mean, you know, I'm not really fully committed, but 
you have to have that full 100% desire and commit to that for it to happen and then it's, it'll happen so I mean like when I was a smoker I tried to I tried to quit smoking probably a hundred times and I had to quit smoking I really had to I had to I had to I had to because one morning at the as the morning's gone on I was only 31 years old when I quit but as the morning's gone on about the last year I was coughing blood up every morning because you know first thing you do is reach for a cigarette when you get up and the first thing you do after you take a puff you start coughing mm -hmm. and there's little specks of blood in my stuff you know and uh, and I said I gotta quit I gotta quit I gotta quit and uh, when it comes down to your life is at stake, that's a good reason. And I, fi <laughs> and I finally made it. Cold turkey, finally made it. And with Christ, our lives are at stake. Yeah. But you had something you wanted to say, Ellen. I was going to say because Christ transforms us from the inside. Right. right. The problems that we still, that are outside, we still have. You know, but Jesus is our constant companion. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say something. I mean, my husband is still in the hospital with dementia. He's not going to get better. Right. Aside from... Aside from mirac miraculous healing, he's never going to get better. Right. And he's been in there for over five years. Mm. And I've been... I've wrestled with loneliness. I've wrestled with a lot of stuff. But you know what? Jesus is always there. And he's there. And another comfort I have is when I do talk to my husband, he knows Jesus. And at first he was complaining about being down there. But recently he said, the Lord told me I'm supposed to be here and you're supposed to be where you are. Oh, that's good. That's, that's a good word. Right there. That's, that's healing, healing right there. Yes, it is. And he said... So, but he says, we're still married. Right. And I, I, and he said, and we'll be together forever. Amen. And he said, we're just apart for a little bit. Right. But the problems still exist. The world still goes on around us. Right. But Jesus changes our hearts. Right. Last year, I had to confront that fear of flying I had. Oh, yeah. Because my daddy died. Right. And I flew out there. But you know, I was so calm the whole time. Mm. I got to talk to my dad for, for two days before. he before, yeah. And he was talking about Jesus. And so I'm like, I know where he is. Right. And, right. But the problem still exists, but I sometimes, I tell people, I feel like I'm wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but... I just feel like the Holy Spirit is always there holding me, holding me together yeah. and saying, it's okay, focus on Jesus. I got this. That's right. And you know what? Focus on Jesus. He's got this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo! Unless we have anything else, I think we could probably wrap it up for the day. So I will officially invite everyone and anyone, uh, if you've been sitting on the fence, you don't know which direction to go, You've been kind of one foot in the world, one foot in uh, in your belief of that there is a God and, and you want to walk in that direction, but you don't quite understand everything. Well, you've, you've heard quite a bit about it today. There's a lot more to learn. There's a lot of other people you can learn from. Very uh, mature Christians, good churches, good Bible teaching churches. So uh, it's a very simple thing. You just you just say, uh, Jesus, I just uh, I want you to be my Lord and, and Savior, and I want to surrender my life to you. I want to repent and I want to go 180 degrees the other direction. I don't ever want to go back, back again. And uh, the Holy Spirit will come into you and live inside you and guide and direct you. Uh, and you have to have that desire and that commitment to to follow, mm -hmm. to follow that path that He has laid out for you. And it's a, it's a simple thing to do. And once you've done it, uh, I can guarantee you, like we said before, you will have your own testimony to reveal to others in a short period of time. But it has to be a full surrendered commitment. You, is, you can't be halfway. You have to believe that it, uh, believe it, trust Him, and put your faith in Him and obey. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.